this is Rediscovering Connection with me, Shelley. And today I have a guest called Chuang Min, who's dialing in from Taiwan today. And I'm super excited to connect with you because you have a really eclectic lived experience, which we'll be delving <laughs> into. Um, a recovering perfectionist who's lived as 18 years as an expat and lived across India, Italy, and China and worked in retail and corporate before coming into what she's doing now. And I'm super excited to really feel into this journey with you and really explore kind of the power of connection, rediscovering connection along the way and how individuals and communities have really played their part in shaping your journey and getting to where you are today. So welcome. Thank you. It's a bit... There's uh, some energy listening to another person talking about my credentials. <laughs> it's very interesting. The story I talk about quite a lot to lead to today is it's actually an encounter when I was in Vancouver. When I was 16, I, was, I went for summer school. My parents signed me up and I came from a background with a lot of expectation success academic like school success and then career success and a lot of frames of how a woman or a person from my family should should act so i grew up in an, an environment that i got used to expectations and i was striving for those so uh, when i was really young it's very hard to tell you know about love and meeting expectation and to be loved you know, it's like really intertwined. I believe this is a story for a lot of people in my generation and next generation and the current, like most of the human beings. So um, when I was in Vancouver, I stay uh, in, with a homestay. And the homestay mom, I remember like uh, when I just met her, she didn't even know me. And the organization signed me up. So she saw probably my some of my information. But I remember the first thing she gave me was a really big hug. I was 16 and I didn't remember how, uh, when was the last time I was hugged before that. And um, uh, when I stayed with her, she showered me with, she didn't know me. I shouldn't, okay, she probably knew me for one month. But then, you know, she cooked for me and she always encouraged me. She didn't ask me about school. Um, and she always encouraged me, like, I should go to downtown on my own. I was 16. I was my own person. So, um, mm -hmm. actually, that was actually the first time um, I knew I could be loved, just be mm -hmm. who I was. Instead of, you know, like, I'm a straight A student. I won all the awards. I all the, you know, like writing compositions, Chinese calligraphy competition. It was a really different experience uh, from, from my own family. My family loved me. I, 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 I got to see that more and more when I'm more mature, but when that at the age, it was really confusing. So that was how everything started. And the, the, the kind of love I, I felt there, I couldn't really understand how could someone love me before she met me. Mm. But I but I cherished that and then I guess since then I was the the journey to understand understand what that was, what I felt was. And then 23 I was in my depression for for some time and and then I came back to really understand who I was or try to construct some kind of identity that actually only belonged to me. And um, I left and then fast forward for like around like 20 years or 20 something years. Uh, I was 33 years old. Um, I had a very successful career, corporate um, career. I was in Shanghai, China. So basically I in charge of one of the biggest market for a French company back then. And but then one day I was sitting on my, uh, on my sofa in my living room and it was a long day. It usually, it, usually it was a long day after work. And then there was a voice came to me, uh, asking me that you have so much love in your mm -hmm. life. Who do you think you are to deserve all this? Because there are a lot of people, they, they, they have less resources, no matter it's material resources or mental resources or spiritual resources. And I, 
did and I do. So the voice was asking me like, uh, you have so much love and blessings in your life. So who do you think you are to deserve that? Then I was like, oh yeah, who, who am I to deserve all this? Being able to explore love, being able to receive a lot of love, being able to build my own community from that understanding. It doesn't take, you know, like one month, it takes longer, but I had those. And then the second question came to me like, so what did you do to spread the love and blessings you received? in this life and that was a question made me really unease because I couldn't confidently say that I was doing that so I was on the receiving end but I wasn't in the giving end mm. so I, I I took a really serious look I asked myself okay if I, I am in this career for another 10 years is, is this career going to enable me or give me the space to do the things that I, I will consider or I can confidently say that I am sharing the love, my understanding of love and my love and my the blessing that I receive? The answer was no. I would have had a very, very good life if I stay in that career. You know, like everything is said, I was on a really good trajectory. I I earned more than 60 years and, and so on. But... It's not going to build me to the person that I want to be. So that's about but convention. You're ready to lean into your human potential. Yeah. And yeah. this was going to be keeping you in a comfortable place. Yeah. And this is it. <laughs> there aren't many, many of us who are brave enough to sacrifice what you had. So that really does set you apart from the crowd there. So well done, you. Oh my God. <laughs> you are- but for me, it's like, because I decided I wanted to be ready. So after that evening that I knew I wanted to be the person, I wanted to be that, then this started to have a series of events happen in my life. Actually, in a way, gently or violently or both, pushed me toward the decision of, okay, it's like time to hand in my resignation. So I guess it's also the willingness that open up to the help of the universe or people around. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God. I didn't, I didn't tell this story for some time. <laughs> and when you, when you spoke to that first instance in Vancouver, like what came through to me was this was your first dose of authentic connection from someone yeah. outside of your family. And yeah. they didn't, they didn't judge you. They saw you yeah. for who you are. Yeah. And it's like, they, they felt you from the moment they saw you. And that yeah. was kind of confusing because people maybe back home didn't, didn't always see you as you saw yourself that there's a discrepancy yeah. so, between that. Yeah. yeah. And then going forward in your life after having that experience, have you since bearing in mind that you've traveled a lot around the world. Yeah. Have you since felt that kind of instant, authentic connection with many other people? I do. Actually, I do. Because along the way, I realized that everyone has a story to share, at least one story to share. And it's only that I have to be willing to see the other people or the other person as they are that they can mm. see me as I am. So I always remind myself that don't hold any prejudgment. You know, when we travel, we will search online. People will say something about that some place of behavior or some people. I try not to read too much about those because they will cloud me as the more preconception we have towards something or someone, the less possibility we will be opened up for that thing or that person. I, I am very aware of this. I can't say that I always do a terrific job to authentically connect with others. Not that I pretend because like, we have ups and downs, but I always remind myself that this person that I chose to spend time with, even it's just paying some bills at a convenience store but I chose to be there and that that person served me so I chose to spend my time and my energy there so if there's any chance and if I can make that person stay or I can connect with that person I try my best to be that 
because I think that it's rare in day-to-day -day dealing, especially, you know, at work or being a sales, standing in a store and try to convert a customer to buy something. Then give us a space to, um, to be that. Yes, so, I love yeah. that so much. It sounds like you live your life in real presence. There's um, I, there's I try a, my best. <laughs> yes, there's a film that I love called About Time. I don't know if you've seen it. Okay, no. But in the in the film, the protagonist can time travel back in time, and it goes okay. through like the men in the family. I'm into time travel. Um, so apologies for this reference, but so no, I do. I do. Me too. So, and in the story, his dad tells him the trick is to live the day and then go back and live the day again. But this time you're really watching and you're re basically really present. Yeah. But in the film, he says he's realized that he doesn't need to do that anymore because he just lives the day in that zone. And what's beautiful is that you just exactly described that as going into the store and every, like we are so many different versions of ourselves in this one being, but ultimately every version of ourselves has got to this one point uh, in time. Uh, whatever happened before, whether I like it, I don't like it, I enjoy, I don't, I enjoy it. Without those, I won't be in this very moment to be this very person. And and I will always ask myself, do I love myself at this very moment? If the answer is yes, that means whatever happened before and the emotions and so on, then I have something to, to be grateful for. Because if, if any tiny little thing happened in a different way, I won't be who I am right now. Due to that 16-year-old experience, it also kind of uh, led me into that actually I'm perfect. I am worthy of being loved. And if I, I can acknowledge that every moment I worth the love that I am, and I am perfect, then it really shifts a lot of perspective about how I see things in the past, how I see things about my future, and how I feel what I feel now. Like, before getting on the call, actually, I've been into. I was had. I had a really emotion, uh, roller coaster this morning. Actually, not not a positive one. Let's say in oh, a way, I'm it's sorry. not a positive. No, it's okay. But then it's I. But then you know, since I I practicing this for a long time, I at the same time I remind myself that I have something to be grateful for hmm. for that emotion. Even I don't like it, I will. I would. I would have probably do anything to avoid that. And then I was thinking, oh my God, I'm getting on this podcast. And then I told myself that if all my intention is to show up here real and helpful and contribute in some way, and that happened, that means that thing is going to, it's meant to be there. And I'm, go, I'm, I, I'm meant to carry that into here with you. I didn't know whether I will be upbeat or I will be smiling or I will talk about more negative I didn't know but I acknowledge it was there to build me to this moment that I was actually consciously preparing myself for and um, how do you feel now I don't know <laughs> it's it's weird it's it's I it's as you said like I can be that and I can be this and now both of that is in me. I still, after this call, I still need to go back to deal with that. But I don't know whether I will deal with it the way I deal with it before I got on the call with you anymore. And, and now, I, now I, I, I try to think about that incident. The way I feel about it is different. Either I feel, I feel less connected to love uh, before I get out on the call, now I feel like, okay, I probably, I, 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 I really connect again a bit more regarding that incident with love more. Mm. So, so it's, it's, it's the connection is an interesting thing. It opens us up to know everything can simultaneously exist. And, um, and we, we, I always have, I always have space 
to look into the same thing in a very, very different way as long as I'm, I'm willing to be the container of everything happened at the same time. So well, that's what I feel, what I'm feeling right now. So with all of your travels around the world, you must mm. have so many connections. Yeah. <laughs> How do you keep in touch with the people that you want to keep in touch with around the world? I have one habit. It has been for 15, 20 years. Whenever I connect with someone, uh, I will ask them that I actually send out a yearly update email by the end of each year and whether that person would love to be included in that update. So I sent out an update email and it's really authentic, like tell, telling, uh, uh, saying about, like mentioning about my ups and downs, what I'm dealing with and, you know, to my acquaintance and friends and so on. So I sent that email once a year and whenever someone came up by my I make sure that I send a message, at least 95%, I did that. Mm. And I, at the same time, I'm also, I along the way, I've learned to acknowledge that each relationship, no matter how much we want to hold onto it at the moment, it will evolve in its own way, along with the people who are holding the relationship. So for example, you and me, after this call, I will continue evolving and living my day. You will also continue evolving and living your day. And it could be after this call, our, our involvement, um, evolution kind of call for us to collaborate again. And then we will become close. And it could be, you know, after this call, there will be a long time that our day and our evolution, our task didn't bring us together anymore. And I've learned to that that be I can't you know like I travel so ma so much I, I met so many people and I have so many people in my life if I I hold on to this in a way I didn't give them space to explore and I was holding on to a responsibility that is actually not a responsibility at all because I believe authenticity is also acknowledge how things need to be at the moment so i did my efforts of sending caring or connecting message whenever the person come to my mind i send out an email uh each year i am on social media so if they are on social media if they say something i will interact uh not just like if i feel like something i will interact and but if they are not on social media i try to reach out and other than that i acknowledge each encounter was there for me for a reason, but it's not there for me to hold on to it. Beautiful, beautifully said. And I love the idea of your annual update. Yeah. That's so precious. I, I don't think what that how long that list must be for you right now, but that's just beautiful. And, and I love the idea of the non-attachment, the understanding that you meet someone and you have an interaction and you may or may not bump into each other again but you're kind of learning and growing with every encounter and I think with social media we we are still connected with so many people from our past yeah. versions of ourselves yeah. which yeah. go back go back a few decades and they would have been part of your past and you wouldn't yeah. necessarily have any sight of what they're doing currently. So I, I think it's both a blessing and also a curse because it means that we are incredibly distracted um, if we do yeah. go onto these platforms and spend much of our days on them because you can just get consumed in what yeah. other people have been up to. So it's about really setting those healthy boundaries with ourselves. Yeah. Because in a recent podcast interview with Robin Dunbar, we spoke about the limits, the capacities that we have as humans for people in our lives. And yeah. when you're saying that people are dropping in and then you're acting upon that, so you are sending those messages when people drop in. According to Robin Dunbar, we only have the capacity for 150 people in that, in that consciousness. So the mm -hmm. likelihood is, 
the people who are dropping in are within your 150 whether you know it or not yeah and understanding the science of all of this just helps me to understand how important it is to have that those connections intentional connections with people so I love the idea of your annual update I think that's just beautiful thank you so much for sharing that no no thank you yeah what you mentioned was also interesting like we in our present day we know people from our past in a way of the past I there are something happened uh to me actually Sunday or Saturday uh, it was an old friend from college and I, we didn't really connect. We, we was in each other's sphere, you know, social media and group and so on, but we didn't really connect. And there was an incident happened. It was a huge realization to me as well that I've been thinking about them in the mindset that I had 25, 30 years ago, because that's where we met and where we were classmates and friends. And, and I told myself that no, no wonder I couldn't really connect anymore because there was not me, there was not them, but I had no information or new data to connect with them. So there was always this, oh, I want to try to connect, but I didn't feel like I could connect. And then, um, or this recently, I'm also in a disruptive energy. So I want to destroy everything. So let's everything feel like everything from the ground up. I'm very cautious about this energy because I can be very disruptive. But um, so, so yeah, that's what you said. Like where we are aware of, are we really living the present with the past energy and past memories or we are really bring everything to here and now and to see everything that's actually really here and now and acknowledge it. Mm. Yeah. Beautiful. Shuang Ming, why don't you tell us about what you are doing today? And if you have an offer that you'd like to share, um, then this is your opportunity to do that. Oh, okay. <laughs> so I am a personal consultant and coach. I basically help high achievers, well, the chronicle high achievers to finally feel the achievement they have in life. And I do it through clarity, alignment, and connection. So that's always a bridging of our spirit and our reality and our inner creation and our external creation. Um, That's what I do for my clients. And I do offer 15 complimentary call for people who really want to explore their connection with their sense of success, sense of achievement, and they really want to create the next level of success, whatever they define their their success are in a more authentic and effortless way. So I offer like 15 minutes call um, to help to set them up a new new action plan and new perspective depends on how that person meet. Um, They can find everything, all the information on my website and also on social media, uh, Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn. Uh, as well so I write about all these and also my own journey as well yeah I will include all your links um, in the show notes but if is there one dedicated page that you'd like to direct people to uh go to my Instagram and see whether whatever I'm working on and feel a connect and if that answers yes then um feel free to drop me a comment, a DM, and take the 15 minutes call. But I can do a lot in 15 minutes and I don't sell, I don't push on that call. So rest assured. <laughs> Beautiful. Shuang Ming, thank you so much for thank joining you so me much. today. I'm really rediscovering how connection has played a part in your journey. And I hope to connect with you again. Thank you so much. Thank you.